Welcome to Decker Tech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today we're going uh, to do a guide on Evelyn, the frosty lady herself, uh, possibly the ice queen. Uh, we are going to do a support guide for her. This is not a frost DPS or a frost tank or anything like this. This is just a generic uh, support or battery build for Evelyn. So we're going to see a little bit of her fiery side. Uh, but yeah, the best way you can help uh, support this content is by uh, sharing it with other people that you feel may uh, enjoy it or need it or benefit from it uh, but also just letting me know what else you'd like to see or what uh, questions I didn't answer so I can help answer those questions in the future uh, but yeah to Evelyn she her her main thing is that she is the generic mage uh, of all three elements and her starting passive is every turn she gains insulate so basically she permanently has this buff up there is nearly no way to lose insulate on her uh, other than the first round, she might get hit by something, but uh, from then on, she'll always have it. And everything on both sides here is all about uh, spells and elements. So for level one, the, the first one here is called an enchantment enchant weapons, which you can't really see anything here. And we have to go into the Tome of Knowledge for it. So what happens is it's a... The, the first version of it says discover three enchantments. And those three enchantments they give you are they're going to be electric, fire, and frost weapons. And you'll pick one of these enchantments to put on your team. And if you look here, it says transfer all the damage to that type. And on damage, damage with hit, apply that chosen element. It also boosts that elemental damage by two. So this is Evelyn's claim to fame. This is the most unique effect in the game, in my opinion, for a support. And you can do some pretty crazy things with it. This uh, Evelyn is really nice if you're running a team that has uh, a very like you're running like a, a fire team or a shock team or something like and one of the enemies is immune to that damage type or that that debuff type she allows you to change your elemental focus so you can clear those enemies that are immune or have a super high resistance like if you're doing a fire team and you're going to the fire biome well you'll probably change everything to ice because everything in the fire biome is weak to ice. So this is, I mean, level two, you get it super early. You get it before you go and start picking uh, your act two, act three. So that really opens up your options for those elemental teams to to pick or, you know, those those single damage type teams to really uh, kind of pivot in case you want to go to a, a, a zone or an act that is going to be resistant to you. Uh, it also is really good at get, getting around physical resistances if you don't have other means of doing so. Uh, level 3. She's got two options here. Versatile. This uh, is a lot of buffs to herself. Uh, fire, cold, or lightning spell will give you a buff. If you cap, happen to cast a spell that's all three types, which we'll get into later, uh, you'll get all three of the buffs at once. Unfortunately, none of these buffs are useful for the support Evelyn. This is more for a DPS or tank Evelyn. So we're just going to pick up Elemental Amplifier, which says plus two to all of our debuffs, which adds up pretty fast. And while I've got this up here, I would like to point out that Burn used to be the best. Uh, it got nerfed to the ground so hard that it's absolutely the worst right now. And you can tell it right here because all of these say minus one resistance per charge, except for Burn. All of these with restricted power on stack to the same amount. So that means all things being equal and going to the same amount, fire is half as powerful as the other two. It does deal damage, which is why it was determined that it needed to be nerfed more. But spark also does damage, and uh, chill has its own benefits and ways to monopolize on it. So uh, I am going to mention burn in this guide a lot. It is in the hopes that either burn gets unnerfed a little bit, or if you really are trying to run a, a burn... Uh, a burn team all the things i mentioned for burn are also applicable to spark you just basically are going to pick two elements for evelyn like you'll pick one or two elements to to dig into uh we're going to always focus with chill for her and then one of the other two uh all of my information here is going to be burned because i'm more familiar with it and i really hope it gets unnerfed here soon because right now it's nigh unplayable at uh any sort of decent madness level because of just how how gimped that resistance thing is anyway enough of that ramble Rant. That was definitely a rant. 100% a rant. Uh, level 4. Spell Echo. This one's really nice for if uh, the the DPS you're supporting is a caster of some sort. And they're going to play this one big powerful spell. Because Spell Echo says here, it says target hero. You're rarely going to use it for yourself. Uh, at least as a support, Evelyn. 
you'll you'll cast it on one of your teammates that's about to pop a big powerful spell they'll get a copy of it that vanishes and they'll just cast it twice so you know an echo to the spell also to be fair that person gets eight powerful that's one of the few ways to get such a like that is the biggest stack of powerful you get in the game from anything so if uh you could also just use it for that effect but it is the next spell and two of the classes well i guess technically rogues have songs which are spells but only two of the classes really use spells at a consistent uh rate but the one we're going for is arcane conduit here and we're going to have a lot of our build around for it uh with arcane conduit it says uh when you play a card draw cards equal to the number of energy spent which can get very out of hand and you will draw your entire deck so fast once this is up uh, we're going to try to build around that i'll show you some things it's it only has six uses but if every time you use it it's like say two energy that's draw 12 cards so this is one energy draw a bajillion cards oh by the way it also says powerful and shield but that that doesn't matter it's it's just i i spend arcane conduit i suddenly draw my deck and that's that's going to be our goal and our plan with that we'll try to meter it out over a couple turns instead of just blowing through our deck right away but uh, no promises no promises and level three, you got two options here. One is a super damage DPS option, plus 60% damage. Uh, but uh, we're not really going to go that route most of the time because we're going to be supporting our team, giving them lots of energy and inspire. And to do so, we're going to get this rebate here. Elemental Weaver says when you play an elemental spell, you gain one energy for each type. Not like, sorry, for each element, you can gain one energy total. So if you play one of each flavor, you'll draw one. Or if you spell, spend one spell that's all three elements you'll get three energy back. So this basically says th three extra energy a turn is how we're going to play it. And that's going to be how we build around it. Uh, don't get me wrong, glass cannon's a lot of fun for damage-wise, but we are building a support Evelyn. And uh, yeah, let's get into her starting deck. So for Evelyn, she starts with two elemental wards. And mages are going to be the one applying insulate to your team. So with that, Starting with two, you can craft a third one to put uh, Insulate on all your other teammates. And if you remember, Evelyn will start with Insulate every turn. So just three of these elemental wards will cover your whole team for the full duration. You can either pick up the perk to increase this to five or just stick with four. Usually a fight is not going to be dangerous past five rounds of combat. Otherwise, something else is going wrong. So the it'll last the entire duration that you need it there because these these single target versions have a lot of charges so three single targets you'll cover your whole team for the majority of the fight and they're they're super safe and healthy and uh sometimes you just use it for shield but most of the time it's hey you're about to take fire damage Let, let's put this on you or you know in act one you have the the hatch or the tree those are two really big fights that you want uh insulate on your entire team for aoe effects uh next we've added ice lances these can stick with you for the majority of the game if you want uh because with ice with chill it's minus one speed per five charges right and with the two of the perks this can be uh five charges so this can effectively be a zero cost slow one target for one i know one doesn't feel like a lot but it's really easy for that to be effective because all you need to do is affect the turn order you're not necessarily like like Having a monster go one speed slower can make or break whether it's going before or after one of your teammates. Uh, it's also a zero cost vanish that deals damage and just has an on hit, you know, a decent charge effect. So it's it's not a bad card. We're, we'll keep it for as long as we don't have better cards uh, because a lot of the mage cards that she starts with are very high on energy and or less effective. Compare this to the, the blasts that we removed. So these, you have to upgrade them to do the burn. And they don't vanish, so they'll be in your deck consistently. So, yes, if you're playing a fire version, you'll keep the blasts and just make them burn. But majority of the time, Ice Lance will do you do you good, do you solid. Uh, she starts with the Mana Gem, with, which is fantastic. Scrolls of Speed, we're just looking for a filler card. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend keeping this very long. It's just a, a, a zero-cost cheap spell to, to throw into the early game so that because because the other cards that she pulled out we pulled out charge battery this is like unless you're doing lightning as one of your elements this does not do it yes it technically costs zero but unlike the other zero cost elemental cards we have in our deck 
it doesn't cost zero. <laughs> you have to pay energy. It's uh, like paying interest. Like, like giving the bank all your money, banks make money because they have all the money and they, they invest it and make interest on it, and then they just give you back the same amount later. That's what charge battery does. You're letting the bank get the, the game take interest on your energy. That is not a good financial plan. More rants. Man, Evelyn's a rant day today. I don't know what my mood is. We, we're just we're going with it. All right, next we've crafted these Ember Storms. Uh, these, I have, you'll see in a lot of these these decks for Evelyn, I'm leaving room for uh, adjustments based on the, the elements you're going. Uh, I recommend Frost and something else. Uh, Frost and Burn, you're going to go Ember Storm. Frost and uh, Lightning, you'll probably keep those charged batteries, I hate to say. Uh, uh, but Ember Storm is just a good value if you have any sort of perks. Because this one burn turns into four burn, and even at the really bad uh, resistance rate, it, this can still add up for damage. Not against any fire enemies for sure, but like sheep. This this can burn down sheep fairly well. It, the damage adds up. It's a one cost AOE. You're you're not going to regret having it. Uh, if you have extra cash, you can upgrade it to the the vanish version, uh, depending on how many cards you have left in your final five. But right now, I only have a final four. Uh, by final form, I mean cards that don't vanish. So just having these around as an option for the late game is, I mean, the, the later turns is, is what you're looking for. Keeping two frost bolts, uh, not keeping three because you just can't maintain three of them. Uh, on a good turn, you'll be able to cast two frost bolts. On a great turn, you'll never cast three, you know what I mean? So, and these transmissions, uh, you may have heard me say this before, transmission is not a good card. Transmission has no good options. This one, you're spending an energy in a card to give someone two energy. This one, you're always netting zero. You're, you're spending two energy a card to give someone else two energy in a card. Same kind of with this version, except for it vanishes. Uh, if you really need to work around it, you can sometimes do this blue transmission just to set up, like, someone's planning on casting a six-cost spell every turn, and they really just every turn want to cast it. Yes, you can do a blue transmission to feed stuff over, but you're not gaining any resources. And there are a lot of later game cards, like Scroll of Intellect, which isn't showing here, because I'm sorry, I, I did this video on Madness 16, and I shouldn't have. Uh, my later ones will be... You'll see. Uh, there, we'll, we'll talk about it in Act 2, but there are, there are so many better options for Inspire for mages right now. And uh, we're just keeping Transmission as a, as a kind of a placeholder card at this point. You may have heard me talk about clarities for the priests. This is the, the, the equivalent. It's in our starting deck. I don't have something better to replace it with. We'll keep it for now, but it's not on our end goal. Really, the best cards we're going to keep to the end of the game are these wards and this mana gem. Everything else is just filler until we get to our better cards, because a lot of the best cards for Evelyn are going to be rares, and that's going to be Axe 2. Now, depending on the difficulty you're playing, you'll either have more or less shards than what I'm doing here, uh, if you are, if you have more, go ahead, you know, go to the Act 2 deck list, see what you can pick up. If you have less, really all you got to do is upgrade these elemental wards so that they have a longer duration, but even then, you could probably get away with a 1 cost. Ice Lance is really good for speed manipulation, and Scrolls of Speed can really get you there as well, because now that speed has reverted back to 2 per charge, we can actually get something done with, uh, plus 4 speed to our teammates. And if you really want to, you can pick up the speed perk, which we will talk about right now. Perks. Uh, as you can see, we've got elemental spells, elemental spells, uh, mainly frost. We've got some insulate going on. And uh, we've got some speed manipulation. Oh, another card to mention, uh, slow. Sometimes you'll want a curse of exhaustion to purge fast. Uh, it's not in a good place right now, and you're not going to keep it long, but I would be remiss to not mention it in this video. So let's go to perks. Perks. So as a support, odds are you're going to want to go before your DPS. So as much speed as possible is why I have it here. But uh, I'll eventually have a, a whole video discussing speed and turn order and best reasons to manipulate it and how to manipulate it. But just as a rule of thumb, you want to go fast. Uh, as much energy as you can afford is always great. But her main thing, as you can tell, there's nothing in everything else except for this elemental. So, I don't always recommend going down two trees here. I've got down the frost and down the burn. Uh, it really depends on your team comp and who you're supporting. I recommend always doing the chill. And when you go down the chill, you're either going to go the plus one charges or the minus one speed per four charges. 
uh, this kind of nets nets even because if default is minus one speed per five charges and you just add a charge, aren't you just doing the same thing? Uh, but this is this is depending on how many other people on your team are doing uh, chill in any way, shape, or form. Like if anyone else is doing any sort of incidental chill. Um, this this can help a lot more. And if you're doing any sort of frost damage, I say go the chargers 100%. If your team is planning on frost damage, go this one. I just left it here to remind myself to talk about it. Uh, and the fact that, yes, this looks like a benefit, but if you're the only one applying chill, just go with plus charges because it has the same effect of slowing them more because you put an extra charge, right? So math does not check out on this talent unless other people are applying chill. Yes. And uh, these other ones are for um, other builds. Uh, if you're going crack build or a, a blunt team, you got to go this one. And if you're going a tank Evelyn, you got to go this one. When in doubt, plus one charge is the way to go. Same kind of thing with here with burn. Uh, you have very narrow cases where this burn deals cold damage is nice just because fire does so crappy of resistance reduction that if you happen to be applying both, uh, this could be interesting to go with. It's still not a good perk, but uh, it might be a lot of fun. You never know. And if you get a frost fire ring, it's a fantastic perk. Uh, we'll talk about that later. So, as I said, you'll pick two elements. If you're going lightning, just go down the lightning tree and uh, pick off the probably the plus charges. Or if your team needs one of these other ones, the slow one's pretty nice, except for 16 charges is really hard to do. So I'd rather just do... Um, this this middle one if your team hasn't picked it up yet or plus charges uh yeah what we got here uh insulate since she starts with every turn this is basically plus five elemental resist to her uh math says that's since i'm paying three perk points for this and it's only the elementals if i'm the only one having insulate this is not good but if i can keep insulate on my entire team the math checks out that this is a positive uh buff to the team so uh, take it or leave it, depending on how comf how much how set on making sure your team has insulate. You are if you're if you're not consistently having to insulate on your whole team, do not pick this up just for Evelyn. The math does not check out. Uh, yeah, and then everything else is shards and armor. In this one, I have six unused points because you'll be picking up some team ones. Uh, like if your team needs vulnerable, if your team needs. Uh, What's the other one? There's some other ones like Bless or Regen. Like, if someone needs something, but they picked up the other one, like, the main main one's vulnerable here. If someone picked up, you know, plus one charges and your team still doesn't have the uh, stacks to 12, Evelyn can just pick it up without applying any vulnerable charges. That's fine. All right, talked about that enough. Moving on to Axe 2. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, it's been a couple days since I've been in the groove doing this, so I feel a little sluggish. So I'm sure I'm missing something. Please let me know what it is, and I will uh, happily discuss it. All right, so Act 2. Uh, you can see I have 16 cards. I do not recommend 16 cards. I have this here to show you that what the base 14 are, and then I've got one for Burn and one for Frost, depending on which one you, you lean into. Uh, we still have the Wards. Enchant Weapons is a fantastic card we now have picked up. Uh, I still have the Ice Lances for now. If you have picked up something else better, like more Scrolls of Intellect, go for it. And this is where I want to talk about Transmission being a bad card. I can spell Inspire. Inspire. So, Scroll of Intellect, Tome of Intellect. They're all sold out. It's because they're good. They're good. Uh, Evelyn is the only one I recommend the blue Tome of Intellect on. The Innate is actually a downside. But... If you can get Arcane Conduit on turn one, then the blue Tome of Intellect uh, can get you pretty far. Uh, it's it's For those of us that like consistent draws, the innate one is actually a negative <laughs> because it lowers your chances of drawing Arcane Conduit later. But it costs one less and it puts a lot of scrolls on her deck. And like I said with Arcane Conduit, she can breeze through a deck and redraw her deck like three times with Arcane Conduit up. It is ridiculous how fast she goes through her deck. So Tome of Intellect actually gets goes up in value for her, like the blue one, because she's breezing through a deck so fast she can pass out all the scrolls. Uh, when in doubt, the yellow version... Oops, sorry, clicking on the wrong one here. The yellow version is always good and is definitely not a dead card on her. 
It's just, if you're going to ever play the blue one, she is the perfect opportunity to do so. Either way, fantastic card. Uh, it just gives more Scrolls of Intellect. The Scrolls of Intellect are the Enrages of Mages. Uh, you can never have too many of them. Because if all else fails and you th feel like you have too many, just upgrade them to yellow. And it's an Enrage. But you can pass the energy to someone else. It's fantastic. Anyway, uh, where are we at? Scrolls of Speed are still here because I haven't found anything better. These Ice Lances and Speeds. Uh, keep them as long as your team needs them. Ditch them as soon as you find better options. Better options being scrolls and tomes for this version or elemental bolt. So remember when I said if we cast a spell, it's all versions. If you look at the fine print here, it says lightning spell, cold spell, fire spell. So in that case, it'll trigger all of our elemental things. And let's go look at those for a second. To remind you, the talents, there's this one around doing elemental weaver. When you play a elemental spell, gain one energy once per turn for each energy type. Well, this says draw, get three, and ener three energy. So even though it costs us two, we're going to get three back. It also applies a bunch of chill, double dips in damage. It, uh, what's the other word I'm looking for? It, Arcane Conduit, it'll draw us two cards and give us the three energy back. So this is really good with that whole end game engine that Eve can get into. Uh, still have transmission because I haven't found anything better. If we're going into fire, Scorching Ray is the best, uh, Applier of burn outside of the ember storms, which I probably should have still had in here as a talking point uh, I'd probably be running ember storms over a scroll of speed and an ice lance depending on what uh, What zone I went into? Uh, but between ember storm and scorching ray, those are the best two burn applicators. So if you're supporting a, a Cornelius or otherwise fire team uh, Maybe like you have a, a priest doing holy fire in that case, this is the best way to get the burn stacks going to make their spells stronger. Uh, and then if you're going Frost, Winter's Tail is one of the most entertaining cards to play. It also goes really well with the fact that Evelyn is drawing super fast through a deck. And we are in Act 2, so halfway through Act 2, we're going to hit level 3 and pick up that Conduit. Let me make sure I'm not misspeaking here. Yeah, le nope. Level 4 is Arcane Conduit. Take back everything I said about that book. Do not pick up that book yet. I mean, it's still fun to play with, don't get me wrong. I'd probably still pick it up in Act 2. Uh, probably Act 3, because Act 2 you're going to level to level 3, and Act 3 you're going to level to level 4. So this is more advice for Act 3 uh, to pick up this Winter's Night's Tale. Uh, <clears throat> I would say run the other version, but this is actually less powerful than... Uh, I guess it's just as powerful. It's just a waste of shards. Uh, this version costs you less on the, the card resources because it has an gain one Inspire Self. Uh, oh yeah, I remember what it is. It, it doesn't vanish. That's the downside. You want the version that vanishes because you don't want to be continually reading the same book just because then suddenly your deck's going to be clogged with random cards that you can't do anything with. Uh, yeah, where are we at? Yep. And then if you're going uh, Lightning, there are a couple options here. Normally they're going to be Act 3, Act 4 because the pinks. We don't really talk about pinks until we get to Act 3 or 4. So, uh... Maybe a semiconductor is what you'd be running. So a Scorching Ray, Knight's Tail, or Superconductor, depending on which element you're going. And uh, yeah, let's go to items. So with Evelyn, remember I said the best card is the Tome of Intellect and the Scroll of Intellect. Well, those both happen to be books. So one of the best items doot, 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 is Fountain Pen. In the game, hands down. Uh, triggers, when you play a book, you draw a card and all your team gets inspired, including you. So this this item says, play a book, draw five. Yeah, that's, that's really impressive. Especially when those books can be a zero-cost scroll of intellect. Which is another reason why the blue tome of intellect that puts scrolls into your deck is so powerful. Other options for Evelyn are the orbs. These orbs add plus charges. Specifically, the Fire Forward, Frobes and Orb, and Orb of Storms, and Ice Orb. Why there's two Ice Orbs, I don't know. But these ones will add the... You're really looking for the plus burn charges on them, and frost charges, and like you know spark charges. Uh, I still think the, the pen is a lot better, and also, because books are so powerful, there's a guaranteed freezing ink, which says, when you play, play a book, apply frost. This is one of the reasons why Eve should always be going Frost, is because this is always an option. Because you'll be playing some books, 
Frost happens to slow people, and Frost as an element is one that you can do as a support without dipping too deep into the damage side of things and still have an impact in the fight because you're slowing everyone down. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's a good one for her. Uh, what I miss here? We talked about orbs, quills, oh, and just in general, Frost is supported a lot better by items. So, when in doubt, Frost it out. That's just, that's where the game's at right now. On hit is another one to do because we'll be getting things like Scorching Ray, Ember Storm. Uh, there's a couple other like Icicle Barrage we might talk about or Superconductor. Those are all ones that have Chain Effect, Repeat, uh, all, all enemies. So you're going to be getting a lot of hits on your spells and your goal is to apply the, the charges. And so if you get any of these items that say like Apply Burn, Apply Frost on hit, then, or uh, there's a Lightning one, obviously lightning but with those you're just setting up your other teammate evelyn is really good with another mage because you can set up a lot of these debuffs that then the other mage monopolizes on and does massive amounts of damages for and eve at the same time supplied them with a lot of energy and cards so she's she's really there to just make someone else look really strong uh yeah other items we've got specifically some rings that are pretty impressive so evelyn is one of the few heroes that can consistently use mana loop if like normally you have to plan around mana loop. uh evelyn's deck naturally fits into a play style that mana loop works mana loop says all energy regeneration minus 10 this includes energize from other players or yourself and uh the plus three energy you get per turn which is basically counted as energize on yourself so you're not going to gain any energy in every turn. Very narrow case of when you can, and we're not going to talk about it. Uh, the but the de upside is that whenever you play a card, you gain an energy, and that energy is not reduced by this minus 10 regeneration. So it basically says you take your entire deck, you reduce the cost by one. Anything that's negative, you now have plus one energy. So if you look at this, if I minus everything by one, or basically, you just take this average energy cost and minus one to it. Now that this is in the game, this is so much easier now. You just minus one to this, and if you're at a negative number, you can use mana loop. Ta-da! Wow, that was so much simpler. <laughs> My explanation, man, I, I practiced it so hard. Just just look at this. If it's if it's less than one, you're good to go. Uh, even with these Winter Night's Tales coming in, you should be pretty fine to play mana loop as Evelyn. And that pairs really well with Arcane Conduit. You can get some weird shenanigans for the, those six charges that Arcane Conduit is going. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, I think that's good for items. I feel like I might have missed something. Just usual stuff. Any sort of speed manipulation. Powerful. So one thing to mention, I forgot to mention about the perks, is mages are sometimes really good to pick up powerful. So in this... Sorry, I have two different save files here. In this one, I have powerful because... As an item, oh, she doesn't even have it. Someone had the banner. I thought she had the banner. So war banner as an item here. Uh, powerful. War banner is one of the strongest cards you can get in the early game, just because your non DPS can carry it and pass it to everyone and give your entire team powerful, which is more damage. And this is since this can be picked up in the starting town, and you can adjust your perks in the starting town. Don't be shy to pick this up on Evelyn, uh, get the powerful perk, and just sit on this banner basically the rest of the game. Because uh, it'll always be a powerful card. Literally. No pun intended. Yep, yep, yep. All right, moving on. Last but not least, Act 4, here we come. Yep, I know how to press buttons here. Uh, so this version of Evelyn has lots of extra cards because, again, we're talking about multiple elements. So, Cold Snap is, is part of the Frost discussion. We still have the wards. We still have the enchant weapons. We, we added a mana gem, uh, if you can afford it, just because uh, energy cards are good. You can also add an evocation. Uh, the I think the default one's pretty fine. The, obviously, the blue one is better, just strictly better, because it has plus one energy. Uh, and those are the two I suggest. Because what happens is, with Arcane Conduit, you play something like evocation... 
yes, you don't net any energy right away, but you draw two cards. So, ta-da! Evocation says, you know, draw two, which is a good card. And then also energize two yourself next turn, which is not a very bad thing. Uh, I still wouldn't necessarily craft it. It's just one I'd look up to pick up. But these mana gems, as long as you have enough energy cost going on, you can uh, successfully dig with Arcane Conduit for lots of cards. And then as you're picking up lots of cards, you'll get these mana gems, which will then give you energy to play more cards, which will then dig deeper with Arcane Conduit. So these mana gems are here because of Arcane Conduit. Uh, I mean, mana gem is always a good item, but these two are what pair together really well. You have to get some momentum going to get the, the chain effect going started. But once you've primed the pump, it's a very powerful effect and you'll dig through your deck really fast. It's whether or not you can get this Arcane Conduit on turn one. So I actually highly recommend if you have a, a scout or, or like specifically Andrin. Andrin has the best uh, card for this. Oh, he does. Let me in his in Andrin's starting deck. I removed it here in this case. He has uh, basically a trace, a, a look at the top eight and discard any number of them and also plus Inspire. And since his has Inspire on it, it's the best version. But any of these cards like, say, Trace... Oh, you know where I can look this up? Andrin. Cards. Inspire. Uh, did I not do this right? Help me out, guys. Starting cards. Apparently starting cards aren't in here or I don't know how to find them. My apologies. So what we're looking for is Trace, though. So Trace says, you know, look at cards to discard any. Evelyn is one of the few heroes that benefits from this super well. At Like, once she has Arcane Conduit, this is always a good card to play on her because then you can try to guarantee that Arcane Conduit in her first turn and she'll just blow through a deck super fast. And if she's blowing through a deck, she's doing all these Scrolls of Intellect and all these Scrolls of Intellect say beautiful things about your team. Like, here, have energy, have, have cards, and you just have a fantastic turn one for your entire team. Uh, off topic a little bit, off track, what can I say? Uh, da -da -da, Arcane Conduit, Elemental Volt still. Sight. So Combustion and Blizzard. Uh, depending on what element, element you're focusing on, there are going to be cards that apply the, uh, the debuff really well, and cards that benefit from it. And you're just going to pick your poison, find something that applies it really well. Blizzard is is the best frost uh, applier other than frozen orb let me find it here did i pass it i know i know how to alphabet a b c d winter orb yep that's that's why i can't find it winter orb is best for archon and blizzard is best for all the other fights and these are just what's the quickest way i can apply chill to as 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 high as possible and since Evelyn already has bonuses to charges from her talents, the you want as many just instances of, of application as possible, and so you want these repeats uh, to do that. Uh, Scorching Ray is the best burn, other than Ember Storms. And then Lightning is, you know, you'll just similarly go for any of these Spark spells that have repeat, so Ball Lightning, or... Uh, where is it? Superconductor? I already mentioned that one. Those are the best two for, for the Lightning. You'll see the Ball Lightning is super expensive and pricey, though. And Blizzard is a lot less so. And I think Winter's Orb... What did I say Winter was? That's pretty pricey, too, right? Four? No, that's super cheap. So, another reason to go Frost. Frost, at the moment, is probably the best element. Um, it's got the most support. It's been nerfed the least. And it's the easiest to apply uh, for energy efficiency-wise. And you also have cards like Cold Snap that says... Hey, you know that frost spell in your discard pile? Well, bring it back to hand and cost three less for the turn. So you can blizzard, cold snap, blizzard, and you've just hit the monsters six times each, applying a, a ton of chill, and they're all now super slow and going later than everyone else, which is why I said Evelyn really wants that speed. She can't get that highest speed on her own. Uh, let's see, she's missing two perks. So her max speed is 14. So really, you want to try to find a way to speed her up through someone else that has fast charges or through armor and ring so that she can get ahead and apply all this chill to the enemies. All right, so I've got three extra cards here. That's because I've got three frost cards and two fire cards. You'll basically pick your poison. The books 
including Hurricane Conduit and the Enchant Weapon are going to be base are always going to be included, and then you just pick one element to focus on. Normally, that's Frost. Depends on who you're playing with. And, yeah, that's a thing. Something I forgot to men mention about Enchant Weapons. So, with the Enchant Weapons, because it says plus Frost Charges or plus Burn Charges, if you don't need to change the element of your uh, teammate, go ahead and just apply this on yourself and do these like blizzards. So if like, you do enchant weapon frost, you're not changing your element. You're just adding more frost charges to your blizzard, which you then cast blizzard, cold snap, blizzard. So you get a lot of chill. Hopefully you see how quickly she applies these elemental debuffs. I feel like I'm missing something here. Do, 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 do. That doll looks for the cards there. Uh, books. Books are good. Mainly because if you draw fountain pen. I mean, well, I mean, like, amplified if you draw a fountain pen. They're still good without it. Uh, team comps. Let's go to team comps. I'm a little over scatterbrain. Evelyn goes really well with any of the with Wilbur or Cornelius because with Wilbur she can apply a lot of spark to the enemy team and give him a lot of energy. Cornelius she can apply a lot of burn and give him a lot of energy. Cornelius overall has just been nerfed to the ground, so be careful running him. And again, with both of these, she can change their elemental damage from fire or spark to you know any of the other two. So she gets around fire immune car uh, enemies or spark immune enemies. Uh, really well for that reason. Uh, she also pairs really well with any of the physical DPS, Grookly and Sylvie, just because she can change their damage type to uh, another. She works less well with Sylvie because Sylvie has a lot of sharp, and there's this really bad interaction with sharp and uh, change element, elemental weapon, uh, because when you transform the damage type, the sharp no longer affects it. That's why Gustav's... Uh, his transformation has been worded the way it does that uh, something, where is it here? Uh, sharp increases mind damage so that his later transform to mind damage is affected by sharp. Evelyn uh, is an older character and does not have that effect anywhere. So you don't want to change someone that has, uh, I think really it's only sharp that that's affected by. Uh, Bless is perfectly still affected by it. Fury, powerful. All of those are unaffected by transformation. It's really only the sharp. So, uh, keep that in mind. Gustav and Evelyn are actually a super anti-synergy. Uh, everyone else she can pair fairly well with. Uh, but she's she's really... Your decision to bring Evelyn or not is dependent on your damage dealer because she is there to just amp the damage dealers. How, give them a good time with the elemental weapon and tons of energy and inspire. I, uh, I think that talks about everything. She's a basic character. You don't need to unlock her. And if you have any questions... Please let me know and I will catch you later. Peace.